Good evening and welcome to the 54th Annual Teacher of the Year Ceremony. This year's competition was open to the public school district and charter schools to submit their best and brightest teachers to see who will be Delaware's Teacher of the Year. Their qualifications, classroom instruction, and their message, if chosen National Teacher of the Year, have been reviewed by our distinguished panel of judges. Tonight, one of these individuals will be Delaware's 2018 representative for National Teacher of the Year. But first, let's take a few minutes to get to know each candidate. From the Caesar Rodney School District, Kyle Hill. Like many educators, I wanted to be a teacher because I wanted to make a positive impact on young kids. More specifically though, I was hoping to be able to work with kids who had academic and behavioral challenges because I had plenty when I was a kid. And so when I was a student, I didn't usually face my challenges head on. Uh, I'd usually shy away from them or mask them with humor. And most people didn't even realize that I was struggling. Luckily, I had some teachers who helped me find some specific strengths, some areas that I did well. And when my confidence built, then I was able to uh, conquer some of those weaker areas, or at least be more confident to take on some of those weaker areas. Now as a special education teacher, I use some of those same principles to help me with my students. The classroom's set up like a fun, engaging experience for students to help them feel more comfortable. Uh, above all though, uh, we're trying to build self-confidence because it's self-belief that's going to help our students overcome those challenging obstacles in the end. Kyle is adept at reading children, knowing how to make quick connections and how to gain their trust. He gets kids and knows how to develop a bond that lasts a lifetime. From the Capital School District, Alexis Huddy. Growing up as a child um, of a teacher, I got to see the different experiences of education. Um, when I was in second grade, I had a very difficult time. I remember how going to school, I was very anxious um, and it really hindered my learning. So I think the biggest thing with my classroom, I want to create an environment that the kids want to come to every day. I want them to come in and, and really not worry about anything outside of our four walls, but really try to focus on my instruction um, and what we're going to learn and make those experiences together. The students make a list of crazy things for me to do every year when they try their best, whether it's on a standardized test or a goal that we have in our classroom. Um, these are things that I can kind of embarrass myself to allow the students to want to strive to do their best so they see Mrs. Huddy with a snake wrapped around her neck, which is my biggest fear, but I faced it. To dress like a clown, which is my biggest fear, but I faced it. Um, and I've even gotten my, some of my teaching partners to even adapt to this and eat a bacon cheddar dried bug. Um, so things like this, which I mean, have, have been proven to really, really make my students um, excel and just have fun and really, really um, enjoy the experience of being in my classroom. Some individuals stand out for their great qualities, and Alexis is one of those people. She has shown time and again that she is a positive, motivated leader with amazing potential. From the Lake Forest School District, Sarah O'Toole. I became a teacher because I want to make a difference in the world. Um, as a teacher, I get to not only teach, but impact the lives of my students every single day. Um, I remember in fourth grade standing in the lunch line and feeling my pockets, realizing I didn't have any lunch money. And it was also the same week that my dad had had a massive heart attack and my mom was just a little overwhelmed with everything that was going on and we had just forgotten lunch money. And I remember standing in line, my face hot, and I know it was bright red, and I started to cry, and my teacher came over and said, you know, asked me what was wrong, and I told him I'd forgotten my lunch money. And he, without a question, he reached into his pocket and paid for my lunch. And he did so much more that day than just pay for my lunch. Um, he impacted my life forever. It's something that I'll never forget. And I knew that when I became a teacher, that was the teacher I wanted to be. I wanted to impact the lives of my students for the rest of their lives. 
Sarah holds her students to high academic expectations for their achievement, while at the same time nurturing the whole child by building up their social and emotional competency. From the Milford School District, Michelle Davis. So I think when you're working with kids, there are always opportunities throughout every day to celebrate something or have a memorable moment with them. But if I had to choose just one, I think maybe what I would select is something that kind of went beyond our classroom. Um, I had a community volunteer come in, it was a friend of mine, and we were working throughout the room with some students. And I had one student in particular working on a project and it involved some objectives that they had really been struggling with. And so when that student finished their project and turned it in, the entire class turned around and started clapping. And for us, that's pretty normal. We do a lot of celebrations for each other and we kind of know each other's strengths and weaknesses and, and really like to embrace one another. But the volunteer turned around and was moved to tears. And I thought in that moment, this, this is really special because the values that, that I try to instill and the culture that we create in our classroom not only affected us that day, but it kind of transcended on into the community and really touched someone. And I, I thought in that moment, this is, this is really special that the kids are doing something for someone else. One attribute that sets Michelle apart is her desire to ensure every student, regardless of ability, finds success. From the Polytech School District, Judy Campo Sabota. The two, the two that are at the top of the list are my parents. Um, they're always, you know, our parents are our first teachers anyway, but my parents are legitimate teachers. Uh, my mom was actually my seventh grade computer teacher. And so she's one of the first people that ever taught me computer, what they call now code. They used to call it programming. My dad was my ninth grade science teacher. And I always loved science, so when I got to get into his classroom and play around with all the fun stuff that he got to do, and he would bring in, uh, the ILC team brought the astronaut suit into the classroom, so we got to see all the really cool things about that. And so it was just very inspirational. My sixth grade teacher, she shared her personal life with us in a good way, where she was explaining to us about how her son uh, was growing up and she was just going through a divorce so she was sharing really really personal things with us I think that helped build that rapport that we all really we just wound up loving her so much. The other two people that inspired me were my band director in high school who I got to have three years in a row. Uh, hard tough person to please and I think that it just really speaks to the work ethic that I have now and my math teacher, I had him for algebra and for calculus. And that man had a great sense of humor and he had so much patience, uh, especially with calculus, because it was a very challenging subject for me um, and just very friendly. So all those people combined have put me in the place that I am right now. Judy is a team player and is often called on for her expertise. She is professional, motivated, dependable, caring, and reliable. From the Smyrna School District, Denise Boyles. So my favorite teaching technique is student-centered. And my classroom, uh, when you walk in, is a community of uh, learners that um, are energetic and uh, the environment is fun. At teaching middle school, I realized that movement and energy and socialization is key to student development. So it's important that when I plan lessons that I include all of those avenues that students can resource as part of their um, learning styles as well. And my very first teaching assignment uh, was in a multi-grade project-based classroom. And within that classroom, I learned how to facilitate small groups of students, uh, lead them into finding resources that um, was a relevant topic towards the content that we were learning. And uh, it, it just makes sense. Um, when you become an expert um, at researching in your own field, you take ownership of that and it's an exciting thing to see. We really are most effective when we help students unlock the power of their own mind. So I want my students to look back and have um, a great problem-solving uh, skill. 
I want them to learn how to cooperatively discuss and sort of argue um, their point of view and uh, be able to have that opportunity to carry on with them as lifelong learners, um, as future consumers, and as responsible members of society. Denise is challenged on a daily basis with a variety of student behaviors and abilities, and she handles this challenge flawlessly. From the Appaquinnemec School District, Cheryl Vest. Well, I didn't start out as a teacher. Um, I started out, I majored in dairy science in college. My mother always told me, you need to go back and get certified to teach. Well, you know, you're in college, your mother doesn't know what she's talking about. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a mother now. My mother knew what she was talking about. So uh, I was a dairy herd um, manager and a dairy cattle evaluator. And I began working with my local FFA chapter and some 4-H clubs. And it began to develop my passion for teaching. In my class, I'm developing advocates. So ag kids advocating for our profession. Last week, we were at the state fair the animals were washed daily, had fans blowing on them, they didn't have to worry about flies, and you get students involved that are out there and they are learning how to be in control and make decisions. So it's, it's kind of a win-win situation for me of combining both my passions of the ag industry and children. Mrs. Vest is the hardest working educator and person that I know. She wants every student to succeed but given as many opportunities as possible, and to leave her class knowing more about agriculture and themselves. From the Brandywine School District, Leona Williams. The teacher that influenced my career the most was Barb Rosen. I visited her classroom after my first year of teaching and I saw the wonderful rapport she had with her students and she was highly effective. She was my role model. Several years later, she was nominated our District Teacher of the Year and I wrote a letter for her on her behalf um, as my mentor. Full circle, when I was nominated and became our District Teacher of the Year, the person I wanted to contact, one of the teachers I wanted to contact the most was Barb Rosen, but she had already retired and I didn't know how to contact her. But luckily, she reads Delaware Online because she saw our picture in the paper for the District Teachers of the Year and she contacted me. So she's my mentor again through this process. And I'd like to say thank you, Barb Rosen. You've meant a lot to me. Ms. Williams has encouraged and inspired my children's love of learning in all aspects of school. She is infectious with her passion for the betterment of the school students and their families. From the Christina School District, Casey Montanay. I actually went away to school wanting to be a writer. Um, and I made it through my freshman year and realized that writing is not necessarily a career where I would know what my job would be. And I'm a planner and I couldn't, I couldn't handle that. Um, so I ended up trying out a teaching course, mostly because my mom taught. Um, my sister had just graduated from UD, which is where I went, and she was a teacher. So I thought maybe this is something I might wanna do. And my very first class, I actually got into a classroom and I just knew that that's what I had to do. So I dropped all the writing courses that I thought I wanted to take, um, switched over to teaching, and I think one of the reasons why I loved it so much is it was so challenging. I had to be able to write and teach writing to someone, which is a very strange thing to need to know how to do. But now I love it, and I don't think I would ever leave middle school, which is shocking to me. I went in a book reader, a writer, I love all the literature they read in high school, but now I just love the craziness of middle school. And everything's chaotic all the time. There's always drama. Or, someone's dating somebody else, but they're your children, and so I, I feel like I'm leaving a bigger impact there than I could leave anywhere else. Casey is an innovator, constantly learning from others. Casey adapts ideas for her own students and figures out ways to advance powerful student learning in her classroom. From the Colonial School District, Lakia Nova. Actually, when I think about the people that have inspired me. It's actually taken a village to get me to this point. 
And so it takes a village to raise a, a teacher. And so I've been surrounded by administrators and teachers and family members that have helped me to come to where I am today. The first thing you'll notice when you walk into my classroom is the fact that it is so inviting. Um, students want to come in and they want to stay. And sometimes they're not even my students, but they do stay. And it's just a great atmosphere of learning, of taking risks, of understanding that it's not the answer, but it's the process to where you get to the answer. Most of my students know to explain their strategy and, and their thinking so that they can teach each other how to get to the answer. Mrs. Nova is not only a teacher, but also an advocate for her students. She challenges herself and those around her to continue to grow and be a better teacher. From the Newcastle County Votech School District, Lindsay Teets. So one of my favorite questions I've ever received from a student is how do you do it every day with so much energy? And I, of course, jokingly respond with coffee. It's definitely coffee. Um, but then I tell them, in reality, I just really love what I do. I find my inspiration and my energy from coming in every day and just really caring about being there. I love being in the school and I love working with you. And they were like, you know, they're like, you have to say that. And I'm like, no, no. I really mean it. And I'm here every day because I want to help you find something that you feel that way about. I hope that when they leave my classroom and then they go into the world, they have any tool that they need to help them succeed. Whether it's something like being able to comprehend and can feel, feel compassion for other people, or it's something like a content skill like reading and writing. I just want them to, whatever situation they encounter, have whatever they need. Lindsay's classroom is a model, one in which many highly effective teaching practices can be observed at any point in time. The lessons Lindsay designs and implements are highly engaging for students. From Odyssey Charter School, Kelly Krujewski. Ever since I was a young girl, uh, teaching was my calling. I loved school as a child. I would be the first one there and the last one to leave with my teachers. I had awesome positive role models that encouraged me to pursue my dreams to be a teacher. I was so eager to have a classroom of my own that I worked hard in college and graduated early. I then started my teaching journey at Odyssey Charter School. I teach because I care, I teach because I love my students, and I teach because I want to make a difference. I think that I want to find the students' passion in life like I found my passion in life. In my classroom, we're a family, we love each other, we trust each other, we believe in each other, and they're not afraid to take risks. I gain 23 students that I call my own each year. I develop these passionate relationships with my students and that's something that I really value. Recently I received a letter from a past student thanking me for making him the man who he has become today. And that really touched my heart. This student needed a little bit more tending, loving care and attention and I took him under my wing and to this day he's a frequent visitor in the first grade classroom. I am not just an educator but I'm also a coach, a friend, a leader and a mentor to these students and to my co-teachers. Kelly appreciates each child for his or her own individual strengths, creates a classroom community of kindness and responsibility, and sets an excellent example for her colleagues. From the Red Clay Consolidated School District, Tori Curtis. The most memorable classroom experience that I have actually didn't take place in the classroom. Looking back several years, um, I would teach a science kit on ecosystems. And I was going in every day and feeling that my students were not connecting to the curriculum. They didn't understand how our lessons were impacting them, and they couldn't connect to what we were learning. So it was time for me to think outside of the box. So I chose to take 26 students camping at Ashland Nature Center for an overnight field trip. To be honest, my colleagues were looking at me and whispering, you're crazy. Although I wasn't 100% confident everything was going to go smoothly, I knew that it was important that I took a risk and I tried this. The wonderful outcome of this experience was my students turned into full-blown scientists. They took risks, they conducted experiments, and they had to work cooperatively. There were so many firsts. The first time my students had ever been away from their family. The first time that they spent the night in a cabin in the wilderness. 
the first time that they went on a hike at 10 o'clock at night using only their sense of hearing. It was wonderful to see my students grow and trust the class as a whole so that they could be successful. When I got back to the classroom, I could really feel that we had developed a sense of family. We trusted each other. We weren't certainly looking our best when we woke up in the morning, but everybody came together and realized our family has to stick together in order for every member to succeed. Mrs. Curtis values the partnership between home and school and is truly cognizant of the fact that student social and emotional well-being is the foundation for academic success. From the Cape Henlopen School District, Corbin Bean. My most memorable mo moment in the classroom with a student, uh, it happened when we got a new student. I had no idea who the student was. Um, he came into the classroom from an alternative placement, um, had a rough history, had a, a rough record, I guess you could say. And it came time for him to come to my classroom. And I said, well, where do you want to sit? So he looked around the room and he picked a spot at the front of the classroom. And I said, are you sure? I said, you don't have to sit there, because that was kind of what the plan was all along. Um, and he's like, no, I'm, I'm good here. I think I'll sit here. So he sat there. He worked his butt off. He wasn't an A student. He, you know, he was struggling before that, but he managed to work himself to be a B student for me. And he maintained that consistency because I feel that we had that respect for one another. The year ends and, you know, same thing. I shake his hand. We you know, talk about what he's going to do for the summer. And at about that same time was when the Teacher of the Year stuff was starting to happen. And, you know, they came at me and said, you know, you've been nominated for Teacher of the Year. Do you want to accept it? Do you want to try for a District Teacher of the Year? And I sat there and thought, do I want all this recognition? Do I want all this extra paperwork and the things that come along with it? Usually I'm just kind of a guy that does my own thing and tries to be successful with what I do. And, um, then they told me, well, one of the students that nominated you for Teacher of the Year was that student. And it kind of like got me to that point, and right now it does, where you start to tear up a little bit and you're like, you know what, I owe it to that kid to do my best and, and try to win this. And if I don't, so what? But that, that's kind of why I chose to even go down this path. And that was probably one of my most memorable student moments was that student with that past and that history and the tough relationships he'd had with teachers finding a way to connect with me and then nominating me for Teacher of the Year. I was, that's, it's like magical, I don't know how else to put it, but that's my most memorable moment. Corbin is a creative teacher who treats all of his students with respect and demands nothing but their best in all they do. From the Del Mar School District, Carol Klein. Well, the most memorable moment in my classroom isn't actually a moment, it happens every year. Um, early on, as part of our unit on nonfiction and college essay writing, my students become true storytellers and I get to hear the most unforgettable events in their lives. Um, I assign them a lesson task in which they all must write a brief piece starting with the phrase, believe it or not, which tells a true story but sounds like it could be fiction. Um, I hear stories of horrific accidents and tragedies, but I also hear stories um, that are touching, you know, about inspiration and courage. Um, I always make it a point to share my stories with them as well, so in this way we really get to know each other. Of course I hear unforgettable stories every year, uh, but most importantly I get to meet and learn about my students and I find out what's important to them and I get to see what they may need from me as their teacher. Um, so, believe it or not, some of them even tell me that it's an experience they won't forget either. Ms. Klein defines what a true team player is and is always willing to accommodate and assist her students in any way possible. From the Indian River School District, Lisa Richardson. I would say that there's been a lot of influential people in my career, but my most influential was one of my former principals, Mr. Gary Brittingham. He was so influ influential to me because he actually trusted us as educators. And I was younger at the time, much younger. But he really let us go outside the box, try new ideas. You know, if we wanted to problem solve, he'd let us. Sometimes we fell on our face, which was fine. But he really showed us what it took to be an educational leader and to trust your staff and not micromanage. And he took me to an educational symposium in Florida on curriculum mapping, which was way far advanced for the state of Delaware at the time. And just those foundations that he set with me has made me such a great educator and I can actually see the big picture from classroom all the way to administration. And it makes me a much better teacher and teacher leader. 
The biggest thing I want my kids to take away, like I said, they're struggling readers and school is not their favorite thing. Self-esteem is usually not very good. Uh, what I want them to take away from is growth. We have a growth mindset in my classroom. We make mistakes. We don't care if we make mistakes. I will meet you where you are and you will grow throughout the year. And I want them to understand that growing is learning and we don't all learn at the same pace but you're making successes. And I want them to leave me having learned, but also to feel more confident and feel more confident in their core classes. Mrs. Richardson embodies the very qualities all administrators search for in a master teacher. She has what it takes as a model of professionalism and a positive voice for education. From the Laurel School District, Jennifer Teagle. So I'd have to say my most memorable moment actually was this past year. Um, our class of 2017, I actually taught as 8th graders, 9th graders, and 11th graders. So um, that opportunity allowed me to build some great relationships with students over the years. And so their graduation was bittersweet because I was excited that they were becoming adults and walking across stage and earning their diploma, but it was also a little sad that I wouldn't see them or teach them anymore. We kind of had an ongoing joke that I was going to show up in their college <laughs> English class and be their college professor but um, you know that it really allowed us to create a bond that um, you know is one of a kind I would say so looping with students was definitely a benefit because I was allowed uh, it allowed me to um, basically know their strengths and their weaknesses and really tailor the instruction that I provided to them over the years. At the end of the year, I was given appreciation letters by many of the students. And when I read them, they shared things like, thanks for never giving up on me. Thanks for challenging me and pushing me to do my best. They really did um, make my heart full just knowing that I had made that sort of impact on them. Jennifer has been instrumental in modeling and guiding lesson planning. Her students' needs are adeptly attended to with precision and forethought. From the Seaford School District, Kimberly Marquis. This year, my most memorable moment had to be when I was teaching a small groups. I looked over and all of a sudden, some of the students got up and they were kind of going to a corner and they had some books. And I kind of looked at her and to say, is everything okay? And then I noticed that they had books and they were sitting down. And it was in that moment that I realized um, that they were starting to read for the first time on their own. And one of my students said to me, Miss Marquis, are you okay? Um, because I had started to cry and she thought something was wrong with me and, and there was something wrong with me. I was so like overjoyed and elated because um, one of my students was an English language learner and he was starting to read for the first time and she had kind of whispered to me, they're reading a book. It was uh, just one of those moments that I'll never forget. And so she was doing some progress monitoring with the students. They finished reading. And then after the lesson, I called him over. And I said, um, Yvette, honey, come over. And he came over to me. And I said, what were you doing? And he didn't answer me. Um, he think, I think he thought he was in trouble. And I said, um, what were you doing? And he didn't answer. And I said, what were you doing with your partner? And he said, I was reading. And I said, what were you doing again? And he said, I was reading. And I said, you got this. And he said, I got this, Miss Marquis. I'm reading. And he gave me a high five. And that to me this year, as a teacher going back into first grade, was one of those moments that, that I'll never forget as a first grade teacher. Kimberly serves as a model of excellence for the district and is an exemplary example of professionalism and dedication to her students and to the teaching profession. From the Sussex Technical School District, Virginia Forcucci. So one of my favorite teaching moments happened um, when I was teaching in a sophomore classroom. We do a big research project and the students choose the issue. My student chose to look at Hispanic dropout rates and she had recently been nominated as outstanding Hispanic student in the state of Delaware. So she'd always been pretty successful. But what she started to realize in her research is that other kids were not. And it really was disheartening and frustrating and challenging. And so she wanted to change her topic because she was angry about it. On the heels of all of this happening, she also went through a moment with another student where a racial slur was hurled at her. The day of the presentation, she stood up before her students 
and I really wasn't the teacher. Quickly into the presentation, I put my pen down. I was a learner. It was so thorough. It was so phenomenal. And at the end of the presentation, she decided to articulate why she chose the topic, and she talked about her parents' sacrifices in coming to this country. And she ended up in tears, and I ended up in tears, and much of the class ended up in tears. So there was all of this applause, but there's a question-answer period, and this kiddo, AJ, raised his hand and said, I have a question and it's not conventional. And she said, all right, well, what's your question? And he was like, would you like a hug? So he got up and he hugged her. So I was sitting in the front row and I didn't get up, but most of my class did. And they all got up and they hugged Alexis in the front of the room. What I didn't tell you yet is that the kid in the back of the room was the kid who had hurled the racial slur at her. So I knew that Alexis was gonna take home with her the fact that that little girl didn't stand up to hug her and everyone else did and that made me really sad because she was such an accomplishment that day. Everyone sat down. Alexis is getting ready to end and the little girl in the back of her hand went up and she said, I actually have one more question. And she said, I'd like to ask for your forgiveness. What I realized is knowledge promotes awareness, which promotes empathy, which promotes coexistence. And we coexisted in a way in that room that just, I don't know if it can be matched again. It was fantastic. Mrs. Forcucci is a leader among the teachers who routinely seek her input and feedback on all things related to the art of teaching. From the Woodbridge School District, Jolene Workman. We have a tradition in our theater company that I direct at the high school, and we have a senior circle at the end of um, our musical season. I prepare a little note card for each student, and I talk about um, the things, the successes that I've seen for them. And to see them acknowledge their growth and to hear them uh, respond about, you know, the fact that when they came into freshman year, you know, they weren't sure about themselves, they were uncomfortable, or they, they judged themselves too harshly, to feeling confident enough to, to step out there and, and know that they have the support of the people that have been involved in their education and can really kind of take on anything that they desire. In the classroom setting itself, when the students are struggling with something and and they turn to the other person and say, you know, hey, I had trouble with this last year. Miss Markman will help you. Trust me, we're gonna have this by the time the concert happens. I can't explain that that feeling of that the confidence they have in themselves that they can now do it, and the confidence that they have in me that that we're gonna be able to get through this together and that we're gonna grow as a group. Jolene does not work or serve for awards or accolades but simply to inspire and impact all those she comes in contact with each day. Ladies and gentlemen, these are your 20 candidates for Delaware's Teacher of the Year.